Hi, this is Marty Lechletter, Product Manager, IBM Forms Experience Builder. In this video, we're going to take a look at combining multiple FEB applications into a single user experience. Why might I want to do this? It allows me to create and maintain each piece of my application independently. Each form can have its own data structure, its own access control, and its own workflow. Yet the different pieces can exchange information and appear as though they're a single experience to the user. The example we're going to use today is a new employee onboarding checklist. The checklist will keep track of the different forms that need to be completed, the progress on those forms, and then I'll swap in an application which is behind each of those forms into an HTML fragment. This makes it appear as though it's part of the checklist, but in reality, the employee information, safety policy, business conduct guidelines, etc., are all separate FEB applications. So let's take a look. I have a FEB portlet on a page in WebSphere Portal, which is rendering the checklist. On the checklist, I can see the different items that need completion, and then I can see the HTML fragment below, which currently is showing some text as a placeholder. So if I click on any of these buttons, what it will do is load in the form that I need to complete. So it's using an object tag to do this, and it brings it in very quickly. So let's start doing some work. I'm going to first complete the employee information and then to save some time I've wired an event into this form so that it's going to pre-populate. And I also put a zip code lookup in here. So it's going to quickly figure out where I live. And then I can go ahead and submit this. And when I'm done, it shows that it's completed with a green check mark. So let's go on to the next form in the process. We'll take a look at the safety policy. Here I have a link to some information that I need to review. We see that the data from the employee information has flown here. My name, employee ID, I can agree to this and go ahead and submit that. And again, I see the green check mark saying that this has been completed. So we'll go on and we'll do one more of these. I'll do the business conduct guideline. Information's flowing into this form as well from the employee information. I'll tell it that I agree to the terms of this and I got that one right. No, nope, that's wrong. Of course, I know the answers to these. Just want to show some of the conditional logic in there. And we'll go ahead and complete this. And it's telling me, congratulations, you've completed this. And maybe this is a long form. I know it isn't, but pretend it's a long form. And I want to save this as draft and come back to it later. So I've got this ability to save a document. And you can see that it is now marked as draft. And when I click back into it, what it will do is bring up the record and show it to me again exactly as I left it. These are the different applications I'm using. The checklist is the main user experience. This is the one that I'm rendering via the portlet. I could render it standalone as well. And then the other applications are called via the URL. So every FEV application has its own unique URL. And if I want to bring in a URL for a specific record within that application, what I simply do is just append it with the record ID. So let's take a look at the checklist application. One of the first things that happens is there's a set of service calls that get fired when the form is loaded. And these service calls simply just go off and they look up based on who the user is and then they get the stage ID and then the record ID. And then they return it to a section of the form here, which I don't show, where I just keep track of this. And this makes it very convenient to de debug the form as you're, you're actually building it to see this. So then I use that information here in the button. So for employee information, I've got a little logic here that says, let's set the variable record ID equal to that value that I brought in with the service for this particular task. 
And then I've got a command here to set the content for the HTML fragment. So the HTML fragment is this text down here. And this text is really just a placeholder. But what I do is when I press the button is I set the content for the HTML fragment to this information here. So it starts with the object tag. And then I've got information on the height and width. And then I've got the actual form URL. And you may notice that I'm starting with just the slash form rather than the full domain. And that makes it easy to take this application and move it from domain to domain without getting caught up in, in specific issues, domain specific issues. And then what I do is I call in the, the variable here, uh, record ID, add that. And if there isn't a record ID, in other words, if there isn't a record in the database, uh, it simply just not, does not add and it opens up a new form. If there is one, then it opens up the existing form. So it's pretty straightforward, no extra logic to deal with new and existing records. Uh, the other pieces which are kind of interesting, I just have some uh, images here and those images are being swapped in and out based on some rules on whether or not it's in the start stage. Um, draft stage or end stage. So that's uh, pretty much it. The user experience, the services, how it's all pulled together. And uh, it makes for a nice, compelling, seamless uh, checklist, which you can use inside or outside of Portal. Thank you.